<coughs> so yeah so let's start with uh, the first startup start application so that you know we don't after uh, you know starting up then we'll go to the some theory part but we have to see how the start application works and how exactly so this is uh, something which will be followed across all the you know layers of uh, struts like this will be the pillar the basic uh, this is not like a hello world of strut, struts but this is something uh, which will be a basic uh, foundation for all the strut programs for all the concepts as such like there are few steps which we have to follow in order to actually make out the steps so let me just first write that uh, steps so that uh, always uh, first step will be so we'll have to first copy the jar files right the first step is copy the jar files which are strut files strut apis basically struts to api right we have done that so copying the jar file is something which we have already shown you right that okay you can just copy out these uh, jars in order to write a uh, you know it will work for most of the strut programs itself but if you are going for any JDBC or any other integration parts, right, then you will have to copy some more. I will show you that later. Right? So these are this is the first step uh, ever to uh, write a start program. Until unless you have these jar files, right, the start program will not work. Right? right? Now the second step is, second step will be you have to create or you have to actually create start dot XML. So this is going to be the controller. Right? So the strut XML will be creating this in some source folder. Right? So this is a basic XML which we have. Basic normal XML we type we create. But the strut XML is something which is going to drive the whole application now. Right? We'll see how it is going to drive. So these are the second step you have to create. And you have to follow the same name, which is struts.xml. Right? And one more thing is, you can actually combine multiple XMLs, but uh, we'll, we'll come to that part later. Right? Because that is something which is an advanced uh, level when we actually move on with our struts. Right? This is the second step we have in uh, creation of application. Now, the third step. Third step is, you have to create a view. Now here view will be a JSP right? Now before creating view, we have to create something which is a startup page. Right? Startup page which we which can be triggered. Right? Or I can call it as trigger page. Right? And then we'll just follow the same steps in order to write. So that you know let's not make complex complicate things. Okay. So once you are done with startup, right? Then what we'll be doing here is we'll be creating model class, which is normal, let us say, action class. So this action is nothing but your model. Right? So it is a normal uh, dot Java class which we are going to write, dot Java, right? So dot Java class which we used to do. But the only difference will be in this action class, we will be writing a method called execute, which is a standard method, which actually will be called from our XML. We'll see how it, it will be it will be called. Right? Anyways, we are not going to call this execute method directly, but internally struts will help us to call this method from static. We'll see how to do that. Okay? So that is your strut controller and model. And then once we are done with model, now we need something called view. We will be creating some JSPs, right? JSPs which will be our views, right? So, <coughs> so this is a. These are the five main steps we have. But there is one more step, without which the complete set program will not work. Which is, we have to edit our or just say, place filter in our web.xml right now this is going to be the one which is which will actually you know uh, guide tomcat right to redirect 
basically this is to redirect request to struts.xml right we'll be writing a filter i in, uh, and i hope you know what is a filter right so whatever we have uh, you know uh, you know learned in uh, servlet right so if you remember filter is something which we will not be actually you know defining or mentioning the name of filter physically so what we'll be doing is we will be actually writing a filter right and in our web.xml in our configuration file basically what we'll do we'll just mention the filter and in the filter we'll mention which servlet you want to map the filter so what happens whenever servlet is called first the request will be directed to sorry redirected to filter and from filter all the you know uh, whatever has to be done like pre validations or uh, firewall setting setting validations or anything you want right whatever are you know whatever you are writing will be validated and then it will be redirected to the same servlet or to different servlet based on the validations being done right the same filter concept will be used in here right which will be using filter but this filter will actually move to our start xml as it so we have something we have to call something different here but yes we'll be calling one of the class of our one of the struts api jars right so which will actually act as a servlet internal dispatcher right so that servlet path and we'll be giving some url path which will actually redirect our request to this so these are the few steps these are the actual six steps basically there are five so this is one time so the trigger page is something maybe i'll just keep aside right you have five steps always so apart from these five steps you won't have anything right but internally maybe create while creating set xml you have to create interceptors which will be add on but even that is a control maybe in an action class you have to create multiple internal classes right or bean tag classes but internally what it happens it will actually come under model and maybe apart from jsps you may be creating some other resources maybe html pages right even their views and you have to keep them so these five steps are something which you have to keep in mind in when you are actually creating your static xml sorry struts application right so this will not go beyond that don't compare anything with our legacy one which you have uh, seen which is our struts jsps and all and don't even think about the next uh, pattern which are strings and hibernate they are completely different don't even think about it, okay so let's get into only struts right okay now so let us just uh, see how it works let's code that <clears throat> okay let's follow the first step so first step we have done we are done with that we have copied the required jars anyways i i have copied this uh, project into your uh, folder share this for, uh, project so you can just go to this project and you can actually copy all these things into your uh, uh, folder right that can be done now let's go ahead and uh, check out the second one the second step is to create struts xml now where to create so we have to create strut xml where wherever we create normal classes now right so what we are going to do here is okay on the day we have created this okay fine so in our struts to fold right so let me just create it again so that okay in our project so all our class files will be in java resources right so in our java resources you can see here you can see the folder as some you know uh, as some some squared one right so this folder is called as a is called as a source folder so we will be creating one more source folder here call it as folder name called as resources the source maybe right and project name you have to mention the project name click on browse you can see there is one project select that and okay right and click on finish right which means this source folder belongs to this project that's why and now you don't have any files in between right now let's go ahead and create one 
XML. Click on other. So we are going to create a very basic XML and we are going to convert it to Stratus XML. Click on next. Now let me call it as Stratus dot XML. Right? So I have to create this under my resource folder. Click on next. Keep it as as basic template. Don't even go for schema file or DD file. Click on next. Okay. So which version? Just leave it, leave this encoding version of it and finish. Now this will be created, right? And now, so this is not a strut XML basically. We have just named a simple XML as a struts dot XML. That's it. In order to make it or in order to make this XML the actual strut XML, right? You have to add a header, which is called as a doc type. And I hope if you remember, uh, if you have any experience on HTML or if you guys know HTML, right? Now, doc type is something which is a, it is like a qualifier of that HTML page or an XML page, right? Or an JSP page or an any page as such, right? So that is what exactly we have to do. Now, first thing, what do we need to add first? So we have to add something called doc type as such, right? So as I said, you have to add doc type where we will be mentioning something. So what I have done is, instead of, uh, if you miss something on header right, your struts will not work. So for that reason, what I have done, I have just kept this doc type ready. Let me just copy this, paste it up. Because uh, some URLs and everything you have to know. Don't worry about this because this is something which you will be getting from your documentation of Apache. Or you can just copy the same thing here. Now, so this doc type is something which is actually accessing the struts. Now you can see that it is actually, you know, contacting the struts uh, side and I'm going to use 2.0 struts XML. Now whenever you are copying the configuration doc type of struts, right, remember that you have to make sure that it is actually redirected to or <clears throat> pointed to 2.0 in both configuration and your 2.0, right. So this is basically an header of your start XML, right? Now this XML will be, will behave as a controller or an, or actual start XML because it is being pointed to 2.0 XML starts, right? Now, inside this, so this is something which we are going to write uh, on our own. The first uh, root will be starts, right? root of this will be struts now, right? Now let me just do one thing, let me just remove everything, save it up. See, uh, I'm trying to actually create struts, see, I'm, I, I don't even get that option, right? Because I'm not getting that option because internally it is not been, right? It is not actually happening there. Now, why I'm getting this is whenever I just copy that and save it up, right? Now, anyways, XMLs are not compiled, but he in this case, as I mentioned, doc type, right? It will actually make this, right? Compatible with my search. So that's why whenever I start something, right? So I'll be getting the strat XML. So this will be the first step that will you will actually understand. Okay, this XML will act as a strat XML. No, strut is something which is a base root of all the uh, all the things what you are going to write inside this. So now, what do we write inside the strut XML? Now, as I said, this is going to be a controller, right? I said this will act as a controller, which means whatever request is coming in and whatever request is going out, right? You can see everything happens from strut XML. That is what we were we learned. Now, this was a strut XML, if you remember. Now, this, uh, you know, class is very important, guys, because this will actually explain you how it works. Now, this strut XML is something. Now, you can see everything is coming in and going out through your strut XML. So that's why we have to write all the redirecting part, like go to this class, which is an action class, right, and go to this, which is a view get back the response, right, and and do something possible, right. So these are the few things which we are going to write. 
so these redirecting parts right we are going to write in our inside the root of your set dot xml set root right now here every every actions right will start with something called package right all the actions we are going to do or redirective actions or handling actions right will be inside your package tag right now let me give the name as so if you uh, are creating you can actually create multiple packages you can actually create multiple actions you can actually create multiple things so as we progress with our codes i'll let you know how to do that fine but as of now this is the base thing which will be created first in package you have to make sure the attribute item name should be default and then you have one more thing called extends so in this extends you have to mention that you are going to extend your struct default api right <clears throat> and then so these are standard this and the last one is namespace so this namespace even if you mention it or not if you mention it it will actually take the namespace i'll let you know what exactly is a namespace because this is something which is basically related to the url how we want to show the pages right but as of now let's take it as slash for slash right so this namespace will actually uh, make your page or uh, what we call is a uh, arrange your uh, uh, action or views right in some folder kind of thing like package kind of thing right but as of now we'll just give slash so that i just want we just want to show all the views in a under same directory fine right? so that is a package so this is a basic package um, you know xml tag we have so inside this xml tag now we have to write a action class right now before writing an action class what do we need we need something that here let's come back to here right until unless you have some actions right and views right we can't map it to our sort of xml right so let's create an action class right and let's create an view first now let us understand this situation how we are going to write now let us say i'm just going to create a trigger page as let me just call it as login page right login dot jsp let's say this is my trigger page so whenever i trigger this right so what i'm going to do here is so from login dot jsp i'm going to redirect my request to start dot xml and this start dot xml will call my action class so let me just say action class as like like login action right so from login action right whenever some validations are done let us say this is returning something now based on the return what struts will do again struts will redirect something to again some jsp so let us say let's call it as welcome dot jsp if it is passed and if it is fail let's say we are actually moving to fail dot jsp now you can see the controller is start xml whatever you have to do you have to go through start xml go to login action again login action will queue back the request right which means it's a it's a by direction one right give back the xml again so based on the response you are getting we have to redirect to the corresponding jsp which is a view we have your uh model right view and your controller now so we were in process of creating start xml which means in my start xml in order to do some actions i have to have i need to have an action class and some end jsp right so let us create an action class let me just say i'm going to create a login action right now so let me create so we have to create all the classes as i said actions are normal classes as such java classes right now <clears throat> where do we need to create java classes we have to create in our java resource under source folder right now let me create a class here now before creating class let me create a package new package as such and let me call it as com dot some uh, sr dot some structs i don't want to confuse here let me just say actions right 
I just gave one uh, package. Let me create a class now. New class. Now let me give the same name login action. Okay? And let me create finish. Now this is going to be our class. Now in this class, what we uh, you know uh, discussed here. So in our action class, we'll be creating execute method which is going to return something, right? So let me create that method here. Now always in your action classes, right, right, your trigger methods. So these methods are something which should return all, always a string. Now let me call it as execute. Right? Now these are method. Now it says some error, right? So let me just write it as try catch and return success at essay. Keep this in mind. We are going to handle this. And let's say you have success and you have an error. Now, there are few things which we have to know about login action, which is action class. Right? So in our action class, so this is same as something like Java Bean class. Right? Now which means action class should have default constructor, very important. Right? It should have a default constructor. You should not override your default constructor. Even if you are overriding your default constructor, you have to make sure that one constructor without an argument should be there. Uh, unless, uh, otherwise it will not work. Second thing is, it should be serializable. Right? Because we are going to use it in, in some JSP2. Right? And then, it should have properties. Properties in the sense, getter setters, basically. Getter setters. Right? So whatever we have seen during our Java beans, right? And until unless you have getter setters, right? You can't map the data. Right? For the same reason, even here in struts, right? You have to have a getter setter. Now these are the three things which you have to follow. Right? Now, even if you are not making it a serializable, right? Java will help you to convert the class into serializable format and make them make the uh, make the class object as a uh, buffered convertible class. Don't worry about that. But yes, you have to maintain this and this. Now, where do we, when do we need getter setters? When you want to map the data. Mapping data as of now, just keep it aside. We'll see it mapping data in in our next step of start application. Right? But as of now, what we are doing is we are creating a method called execute, right? So this execute method is standard again, right? If you if you don't give any method name, execute method name will be called automatically. So this is your action class. This is your action class, right? Now, so here if you can see here, you're actually passing two things, which is success or error or anything. You can just give anything. Right? But based on the actual return type you are giving, you have to main you have to maintain the same name even your set XML because as I said based on the response which action, login action class is giving back to start XML right your next action next forward action will be decided right so this return is nothing but the return string what whatever you are actually passing on right as of now anyways I'm not doing any action in this but yes uh, it will return something let us say right We'll move ahead and we'll see what actions we can do inside that. Now, let's create these two pages, which is welcome.jsp and fail.jsp. <coughs> so, JSPs we'll be creating in web content here. Let me create a JSP file. Let me call it as a welcome.jsp. So, in my welcome.jsp, I'll just give very straightforward thing that a login successful. I'm not validating anything as such, right? Because we have to see the main struts communication part. Now let me create one more JSP. <coughs> let me call it as uh, failed, right? Dot JSP. Let me just say fail to log. Right? I'm just giving uh, just a, a data to display so that uh, once it comes to view, right? Now you know. Now, once it 
actually comes to view. Now, whatever we have learned in Struts, uh, servlets and JSPs, you can move. <coughs> you can go. You can go ahead and do you know JSPs, right? So that is all. Uh, two JSPs created. Welcome and fit. Let's go to StratXML now. Now our resources are ready. Our uh, views are ready, and our uh, model is ready. Now, how to map it to StratXML is the question. Now, a particular model class and a view will be actually tagged in a strat XML inside a package, inside any of the package. You can create multiple packages as such, right? So you have to map them in something called action tag, right? And here you have to mention the name of the action. Now, this name is going to be your uh, URL pa URL pattern, or I would say it as um, Calling method, right? Calling server. When you, if you remember uh, any server or JSP, right? We used to create a trigger. Now let me create the trigger too, right? So we have to create one trigger class, right? To understand what exactly I'm talking about. Let me create a startup page. Now this startup page is login.jsp, right? I'll create this, and you'll understand what exactly is this name. So this is the time where I, where I have to show that, right? Let me create a JSP login.jsp. Fine. Now in my login.jsp now I'm gonna create a form here. <coughs> oh, sorry, form here, right? And in this form, I'm going to create an input, right? But as of now, let me just create type as submit directly, right? Because we are not going to validate anything, right? Value as log. Now basically what we used to do is we used to create an input, right, uh, type, we have text and name is uh, username, right? you name. Break it up and you have your input, type, you have text, <coughs> you have name as password pwd, right, and break it up. So these are basic, um, you know, thing which we have seen. And if you remember, we used to give some action here. Right? Action is something. If we didn't get, if if when we were in servlets, we used to give servlet name. When we were in JSP, we used to give JSP name. When we were in HTML, we used to give HTML name, right? Right. So here, what should I give? You have to give your action name here. Now let us say if I'm giving action as login, right? We have to mention this name as an action of your login. Now this is what is something which you are going to map. Now which means whenever I said your login.jsp, whenever you click on submit, right, it is it is going it will go to start XML, right? Now why it is going or where it is going, it is going to this place, which is your action. <clears throat> it named this. Now with you can actually create multiple actions, but with the same name, you can't create a multiple actions. But in different packages of different namespaces, you can create the same name action. Now, don't get confused with this. I'll explain you what exactly my sentence means. Right? Now, this is where you have to give your action, which is your name of a log. Now, now you understood how I can actually move from normal trigger to my set action. Right? Now, question is, how can I move from start XML to login action? Right. So we are just creating, joining the nodes, right? So that you can understand. How can I move from my start XML to login action? Is go back here. So here, in our action class, <coughs> we have one more attribute called your class. Now here you have to mention what is the class you want to make it as a model for this start XML. Now here in this class, now anyways, we have made this login action, right? Remember one thing, always you have to give the complete, you know, uh, true path of your class. You have to mention your package and then you have to mention your class. So this is very important. Until unless you, because in start XML, you can't import packages or import anything, right? So that's why whenever you are giving any path or anything, right, you have to give actual path of that. That is what? We just gave some com dot our package name and the class name. Now this is that. 
Now, whenever login.js is triggered, action action tag will be triggered in this, and that action tag will actually call one of the login actions, right? Now, here in this itself, you have something called method, right? But as of now, we are not going to use this method, right? We'll see it in our later classes. If you don't give any method in your action, right? It will go to this login action, and it will actually call the execute method. So always remember you have to mention execute a small e and all. This is standard. Now, once it comes here, you can see that okay, you have some return types, either something right, some object it will return, basically string. Now, how to handle that in my static summary is the next question. Now, how to handle that is inside your action, you have to create your result you have something called result things right so in this result you have an attribute called name now this name is nothing but whatever is being written from here right so this you will have to handle as a result name that is what you have i've just copied the success and i've just got that in. now whenever <coughs> this action class gives back success then what should you do now this is the place where you have to mention your view now let me mention welcome dodges that's it now this will actually move to welcome dodges now let's create <coughs> one more result of name remember written whatever you are returning should be same even it is it is a uh, case as to if you give capitalist here it won't work it should be same and if it is fail, then you'll have to go to your fail.jsp. Now, the, these JSPs are something which you have already mentioned. Fail.jsp and you're welcome. Uh, but, Sriya? Yeah. yeah uh, uh, so this is Anita. You just now said that, that that doesn't have to return success or failure, right? It can return any string you Yes, yes, yes. It login. can return anything. Based on the return, whatever you I mean, see, it can return anything, but you have to decide what, what you know, what are the set of values which it will do? Oh, but, but what if, if I decide to return a, a complex value? Yeah, what, uh, like, like, you mean? It's like, uh, I mean, the, the execute method, for example, say, uh, okay, it's returning some you are tough actually data. It means something like this, right? Let us say you are No, actually, I mean, is it like a base, basic data types? It does, does it have to return always basic data types, like a string, integer, boolean, that kind of? Or can I return complex types like arrays or hash? No, 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 no. It should be a finite value. And basically, okay. it should always be a string, basically. Okay. Right? No, no, you can't return C. What is the use of returning an array list, right? Because there is no use. Now, in this action class, this method is an... <coughs> Uh, model action method where you are going to write a uh, uh, write uh, write a, your your logic right, but yeah. whenever you are writing the logic right, based on whether to which page you want to go, you have to return only a finite tag, and basically it should be it should always be prefer preferably it should be a finite string, and this string so should can be, it be can it be more than uh, two instances of returns based on the um, condition? Can I return yes, like yes, more yes, than yes. two you can, yes, values? Yes, yes, you can you can return you can return anything. Okay. Yes. Okay. But the only thing is, whatever you are returning here, right, should be handled here. We can't handle them on fly. <clears throat> that is one thing we have. Okay. Hmm? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, where were we? We were at, uh, yeah, tagging this, right? So, now your start XML is tagged to your model and based on the return, we we have <coughs> handled the result and we just move to our uh, one of the views right based on this now this is how we create a, a simple uh, start xml so now the start xml is ready now now this is ready to handle your login um, login uh, action which will go to login action class it will validate it it will come back it will handle the result based on the result it will go to JSP. that's what happens right now so now we have seen creation of controller is done, startup page is done, action class is done, <clears throat> right? So JSP is done, and last one which is very important, you have to place a filter, right? <clears throat> in your web.xml, right? In order to redirect to start XML, right? Now why is this important? <clears throat> Until unless you place this right, 
uh, as we know every server it can be tomcat or web uh, logic anything right the first step what in in a in the in a complete web application right the first file which it, it actually accesses the web production definitely because this is called as a deployment descriptor right so this will actually redirect you to actually where to go that is what happens now you can see here as we have actually created a startup page right you can actually mention that startup page which is my login.jsp in my web.xml now let me just remove everything I hope you know this welcome file. Let us say I am making it login.jsp. Now whenever we run this project from anywhere, right, without giving any page, it will directly go to login.jsp. It, how it is happening? Because any server will first read the a configuration file, it will get the welcome list and based on welcome list it will search, okay, whether this resource is there or not. <coughs> if it is there, it will go to that resource. Now in the same way, we are going to return a, uh, um, or we are going to write a filter here, which will actually redirect to our Struts API. Thing. Now, how to write a filter? Filter writing is same. We'll write a filter here, and we have your filter. Uh, you have name, right? And you have your filter class. Same thing as, and once it is done, you have your filter mapping. <coughs> So inside your filter mapping, anyways, filter name again, and you have your filter. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Filter name here, and then you have to map it up. So you will be mapping with your URL packet. <coughs> now this is what it is. Now let us say filter name is struts2. Right? Now I'll give you what exactly should be the filter class. And now mapping, I have to give struts2. You have to main, maintain the same name. And URL pattern is something which is important. Now, URL pattern is something, if you remember, when we used to go to some JSP or servlet set, we used to give either a servlet name or a JSP name. But here, whatever request comes up to my application, my start application, right, I want to move it to my struts XML. Because that, is, that should be my uh, controller, right. So for that reason, what we'll do, we'll just say slash and start. What does that mean is, Whatever request comes for any resource, right, it will map to this class. That is what is the reason, or that, that is what is the meaning of this. Now, what should be there in this class is important. Now, in this class, if you remember, when we were in, uh, uh, what is that, filter, sorry, servlet, right, we used to give servlet name here, right. <clears throat> if you map your class with servlet name, what, what, what it used to give? Whenever any request comes to the servlet, right, it used to move to filter, right, and it used to do some, uh, uh, you know, validation, whatever you want to do, and then it will move to the corresponding uh, pattern you want. Now here, you have to mention which filter class you want to go. Now this filter class will be your, one of the struct internal API class, right. Now that filter is your org dot don't worry actually even this one this class should not be uh, misspelled or you cannot you know uh, take a chance in this because this should be saved this is one of the package in our uh, struct APS so I have just copied that part so this one you can just copy this here I've just created in my previous application I've taken this part copy this up and paste you'll get this package from your documentation again don't worry. Filter dispatcher is a class, <clears throat> right, which is going to take care of reverting the request to your start XML, which is, so now let me arrange the files. So your web.xml is the first file, which will be triggered, right. Now what we are doing, we are actually calling login.jsp, which means, let us say my trigger point is login.jsp, I mean the startup page. Now from login.jsp, I have written a <coughs> action. Right? I have written an action class where I just wrote login. Now whenever I say form login action, right? again if you go to web.xml it will see that for all the things, whatever resource I am calling, I am actually moving it to filter dispatcher, which means it will search for struct.xml. Now struct.xml is being did, you know, uh, written in my under my resource. It will go to struct.xml here. Now 
now your controller part came now it will search for action called login now it will search all the packages right for login action <clears throat> all the packages with default namespace because i am not mentioning any of the na uh, other namespace here like you know like uh, hello uh, slash right so these are namespace we are going to mention don't worry about this we'll see in our upcoming classes right now it will go to login action okay now login action is ready so this login action is pointed to this action class it will go here execute this based on return type it will come back okay it was success it will go to welcome.jsp otherwise it will go to fail.jsp so this is a complete step of creating your uh, set exit fine so now any doubt still this part so Srinath, if my application is like a mid-sized one and if I have like uh, 100 pages, mm -hmm. so there will be 100 different uh, um, tags, the, 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 the packages, the actions should be 100 different ones. No, no, no. <coughs> see here, uh, there is one more thing here. Uh, see, from one view you can move to other view, right? I mean, yeah. from well, welcome.jsp, I can actually move to any number of JSPs, right? Which, which don't need any uh, validation, let us say. What I mean yeah, is, that is that is right. My question is, suppose uh, uh, in a website web application, users uh, will go click in different links and then go to those pages, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. So okay. in that scenario, when they click on that page, that yeah. go, that has to be associated with a with an action uh, tag in the stud .xml, right? Not necessarily, right? Like in in your welcome, like I understood what you are saying. Uh, uh, okay, let me get back to that. Okay, let me run this. Okay, I'll get back okay. to that. Okay. Okay, okay. Fine. Any questions on this, maybe? Fine. Let us run this. <clears throat> Let me just rebuild this project. I'll show you. I'll show you, uh, Srinita. Let me run this. Yeah, I mean, you can cover in the next class also if you are already planned it. Eh? Definitely. Definitely. No issues. Okay. So, let me just, uh, for the whole project which we are going to see in this slide, let me select this Tomcat instance. Click always use this server and finish. <clears throat> so this will open up our okay login the JSP. Let me copy this. Go back to my <clears throat> web page. Let me show you show it here. Right. So let me copy that. Now even if you don't give the name right. You can see it will actually go to your login.jsp, which means your web.xml will act for both. Right? It is acting for both a default page and a filter. Now, here you don't have to do anything because we haven't handled anything. Now, let me click on login. When I click on login, now you can see it directly went to the login successfully. Right? Now, that is why because it from your login.jsp, you can see your stud.xml is working now. Right? From login, I haven't mapped anything to my welcome or fail, right? I just mapped to my start XML, where in my login action, I'm calling, I'm just returning success. So based on success, it is giving me this. Now, let me replace this with fail. Let's say, in i is equal to 10 divided by 0. So, I'm just creating some error here, right? Because based on this error, it should return my fail, right? Now let me just uh, clean this up, restart your uh, server. Now always, whenever you change your XML, right, whenever you change XML, always restart your server, right. <clears throat> restart this. So once you restart this, let's go back and <coughs> check out our uh, here. Now let me click on login. Now you can see fail to login. Fine. So this is how you can actually start looking at. Now it will actually uh, shows fail to login. Now can you see the uh, URL here? In URL you are not actually checking out whether it is a .jsp or anything. Right. So that is one, uh, one more usage of this. Right. When we actually create an MVC site, right. Now you don't, you won't be actually, actually we were in, uh, we are in uh, uh, some page, 
right, which is some welcome.jsp or fail.jsp, right. But you can see that we are, we are actually embedding the page content into our action name. Now this action name is something which will be shown in our URL. The, the action is nothing but this action. Only this action will be shown on URL for all your results, right. It won't show welcome or, or fail, even if you define your 100 different things, right, it won't show. That is the beauty of this. It will show only this action class and it will actually move to different content whatever we have. Right? That's how it, it will be shown. Right? Now this is the first base application of your studies. Right? Now as uh, Sunita was asking, let me show her that. Now let me just say I don't have this. So in my welcome.jsp, let me create one more uh, JSP here. Let me just say um, just a this is some second dot JSP something right now in my welcome dot JSP let me create <coughs> enter time where else you create the right. so what I'm gonna do here I'll just say second dot JSP Now let me uh, bring this up and here I am actually going from one view to other view. I am not even touching my action uh, strategy right now. Let me just go back to <coughs> right. Let me click on login. It will go to login successful. Click on go. Right. I am not using anything. Now based on how actually you want to use right, you can use your structure. Fine Sunita. You can actually move from view to view. That is allowed, right? Because from once you come into JSP, you have to. But yes, it is true that if you want to actually go through a static XML, if you have hundred different actions, you have to mention hundred different actions in your structure. Okay. Right. So any doubts till now, guys? So that is how we actually create our uh, strategy product, and this will be based for all. 